Hey, what's up guys? Sam here, welcome back to another video. So iOS 14 has been a hotter and hotter topic pretty much every week as June is approaching when we are expecting the first developer beta to drop. And I wanted to update you on the state of what we're hearing. Today, insanely good news that Apple for the first time ever is considering allowing us to set default apps, meaning we wouldn't have to use Apple Safari, we could use Google Chrome. And there's also been a lot of talk of a potential redesign and I wanna tell you whether or not there's actually anything suggesting that that will be the case. So if you're looking forward to this video, drop a like down below, great things ahead, hit subscribe for more, let's go ahead and get started. So overall, there have been a lot of questions this time around as to what the main features of iOS 14 are going to be, as iOS 13 satisfied so many of our qualms, no dark mode, being able to use gaming controllers, like these were things we were waiting on forever, but still a couple of things remain that we still want. Things like being able to change the way that your icons on the home screen look based on your personal preference, and also being able to change what apps open things by default. The second of these two has been on our minds forever, and honestly, it was something that I didn't think we would really ever see. Apple makes it very clear that while on the Mac, you can set default applications, Apple TV, iOS, watchOS, they want you using Apple stuff before anything else. In a lot of cases, I would argue that it doesn't really matter, but in some, especially in two, web browsing and email, I think it really does make a difference. For example, every time you tap on an email address, it will take you to the Apple Mail app. There is no way to have that email address that you tap natively open in Microsoft Outlook or Google Gmail. You just can't do it. Sure, there's workarounds, but the same case is true with web browsing. By default, every time you tap on a web address, it's going to shoot you to Apple Safari, and then you can maybe open it up in Google Chrome. But again, there's extra steps involved here that on many other platforms like Android, there aren't. But here's where our jimmies start to get rustled, ladies and gentlemen, because we've got a fresh report today from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman with an insanely, nearly spotless, great track record, saying that for the first time in many many years, Apple is seriously considering allowing users to set default apps, not only on iOS, but also like a different music service such as Spotify on the HomePod. And both of these are really big points for a couple of reasons. First of all, for the iOS side of things, Apple has never done this because they've always wanted to control the experience themselves. And I think while that was great in the past, users have been begging for an option to get out of the walled garden forever. And this is absolutely something that would draw some Android users over to iOS that may not have jumped on the boat before because that's really important for a lot of people, being able to use your workflow as you want, not having to use Apple's workflow because they think it's the best. And number two, on the HomePod side of things, this speaker has struggled so hard to gain global adoption. I think it's like less than 5% of the major speaker smart market out there because you can only use Apple Music. And if you wanna to talk to your HomePod with Siri, that is the one option. Apple Music, that, and nothing else. Well, as soon as later this year, Spotify could be your default music player with Siri integration directly on the HomePod. And I will tell you right now, if this happens, I will switch to Spotify instantly. So let me hear your thoughts about this down below. Like, I can't overstate how big this is. This is a huge step for the platform. And I'm honestly kind of shocked we're talking about it in 2020. I thought this was many years down the road, but this is fantastic news. It's not 100% coming for sure, but Apple's considering it, and it seems like they're weighing on the side of let's do this. What I don't think Apple's weighing on the side of let's do this just yet is a complete redesign of iOS 14. And while that's plausible, I don't think we're gonna see anything dramatic just yet. All this has been started due to primarily one article on Medium where somebody was talking about 2020 design trends and they bring up new morphism. It's sort of this made up term for a return to skew morphism, which is like the iOS 1 through 6 design, all the way with a combination of flat elements from iOS 7. So it's sort of a combination, a healthy, happy medium of the two, uh, a marital connection of sorts, but it's not exactly something that I think is on Apple's radar. Just as flat design was a trend in Apple, without question was the primary source in popularizing that along with a number of other brands that followed suit, um, I, there's not a lot suggesting that this is gonna be the case. I mean, there's so many elements that we've seen of skew or pneumorphism even in iOS 13, um, maybe in some car softwares, but I, I don't think it's like that pervasive to even call it a major industry trend yet. As you can see, some of this stuff looks incredible and I actually am a big fan of design. I do like it in general and I do absolutely believe that iOS 14 needs a redesign. I don't know if it's gonna get one, but I really want it to happen. But I wanted to sort of give you the rational perspective behind all of this because I've seen a lot of videos about it and I just don't want uh, 
there to be a consensus essentially that, well, yeah, of course it's going to get a redesign. When I think you'll just be disappointed if you end up believing that at this point. So let me know your thoughts on this down below. Are you ready for a redesign or are you still very happy with the iOS 7 era? Do you think it's stale? Do you think it's fresh? Are you looking forward to iOS 14? Are you looking forward to default apps? Let me know about all this down below. But as of right now, yeah, guys, not exactly looking too hot. No smoke for this fire for the iOS 14 redesign just yet. But trust me, the second we get some reputable info on that, you know I'll be making a video here. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you did, drop a like down below. It does seriously help me out. And hit subscribe so you stay up to date on everything else to do with Apple. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. And I'll see all of you in my next video.